we are going to start our service-based learning projects. Everybody stop for a minute on your computers and I want you to listen. I have something that I want you to listen to. It's a very important piece of history. I want you to see if you can identify the voice, see if you can identify the possible time period, and then most importantly, I want to see if you can tell me what does he mean by this statement that is so famous that we hopefully all heard. Truly like the world. And so, my fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Who thinks they know who this famous person is? Hemi. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. Does anybody know what president he was? When did he serve as president? Around 1960, 1961 is when he spoke these words, and he was our 35th president. Now, who can tell me what you feel like that means? Ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. And I'm paraphrasing. What do you say, Tiara? Um, as we get older, don't wait to the white people Okay, she says. Don't wait for people to come and do things for you. You do it for yourself and you do it for your country. Anybody else have a take on that? Kaylee. Don't wait for change to happen. Be the change. Don't wait for change to happen. Be the change. I like both of those. Okay, anybody have any other ideas or anybody want to give any of the input? Okay, well, one of our service-based learning projects that we're going to start with, if we look at our standards-based data wall, <coughs> something that we struggle with by our standard nemesis is dimensional analysis. As you can see, we learned that back on August the 7th, and some of us were still struggling with that. Something new that we're starting with is we're creating two-way frequency tables. So how are we going to use that as a service-based learning project? Well, one of the things that we're going to do is we're going to look at revitalizing downtown. What does it mean by revitalizing downtown? Or at least coming up with ideas to try and revitalize. What does it mean to revitalize? Make things prettier. Who else has an idea about revitalizing? What do you say, Cam? Beautifying. Beautifying. What is our purpose in doing that, America? Modernizing it. What is our purpose? That's awesome. To bring more people to town. To bring more people to town. There's a book that we're going to reference. Andy Kite. He's a Georgia author. He was 16 years old when he wrote this book. And he's talking about four vanishing towns in rural Georgia. He's talking about how people are moving away from the rural Georgia and going to the bigger cities. And in here, he speaks of this place called Boneville that's very close to us. How many of you have ever gone to Boneville? You may live in Boneville, Boneville or you know where it is. Okay? I lived in Boneville, too. And Boneville used to have a grist mill. What is a grist mill? They grind up, like, wheat and stuff. Yes. And they, they grind up grain. They do. That's awesome. Um, they used to have a hotel. They had a post office. And that town now in Boneville, is there much in Boneville at all? No. So we don't want Thompson to, to become a vanishing town in McDuffie. We're going to look at trying to revitalize downtown through the lens of our standard that we're struggling with and the one that we're trying to learn. I want you now to go to Google Maps, and we're going to take a virtual view of downtown, a tour downtown. And I want you to look at the empty buildings. And what you're going to think about is how could we attract people there? How could we do, as Demerica said, modernize. Somebody else said beautify. Somebody else said attract more people to come. And I want to hear your discussions about what do you think should be in those buildings? And start jotting down ideas of what should be in those buildings. How could we revitalize downtown? 